Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to auto build and create time lapses of amazing buildings easily by yourself. For reference, you can check out my time lapse video of building a Death Star, which was done using this method. We'll install a custom client and a couple of mods for this. The main mods will need our Baritone and Light Matica. We'll use Multi MC Launcher to install the mods. This method is simpler and prevents any disruption to your standard Minecraft installation. First, let's head to the Multi MC website and download the Multi MC Launcher. Extract the downloaded file and open the folder. You can create a desktop shortcut of the launcher if you prefer. Run it and log into your account. Now, create a new instance, select version 1.20.4, and give it a name of your choice. After creating it, right-click on it and select Edit Instance. In the Version tab, look to the right and click Install Fabric. Choose the recommended version. Next, let's start downloading the mods. If you'd rather not bother with downloading each mod and finding the correct version, I've prepared a pre-configured file with all the mods, which you can use to skip this step. First, Google Meteor Client and download version 0.5.6 for Minecraft 1.20.4. Also download Baritone. If it has already been updated I will leave the link to this version in the description, since newer versions sometimes don't support the Baritone mod. Then, we'll need Lightmatica. Search for Lightmatica 1.20.4 on Google and click on the CurseForge link. Download the latest version of the 1.20.4 release. As you'll see, Lightmatica requires the Mollylib library, so make sure to download that in the same way. If you want to create cool time lapse of your builds, you should also download the replay mod. Search for Minecraft replay mod and choose version 1.20.4. I highly recommend the World Edit mod, which you can find on CurseForge as well. Now we have all essentials, but there's a limitation with the Baritone mod when auto-building in creative mode it doesn't use the full inventory for block spaces, limiting you to only 9 blocks in the hotbar. In survival mode, you would eventually run out of blocks. To address this, I've created a mod that replenishes blocks every time a block is placed. You'll find the link to my mod in the description. For it to work, you will also need the Fabric API, which is linked in the description as well. To make your time lapse look stunning, we'll need shaders. For fabric, we can use a mod called Sodium for better performance. Download the latest release for version 1.20.4, and then we can get iris shaders for the actual shaders the same way. You can choose your own shaders, but I recommend Silda's Vibrant Shaders. Keep in mind that shaders can be quite demanding to run but we'll only be using them during time-lapse, and they can be applied later on. Now we have everything. All you have to do is drag all of these mods into the Multi-MC Mod menu. Also, place the shaders into the shader packs. 
I also recommend allocating more RAM to Minecraft like this. And that's it. Now let's try it out. Open up the game and start a new world. Make sure to enable cheats. Now let's get to auto building. First, let's familiarize ourselves with the Lightmatica mod. On Google, you can search for schematics to use with Lightmatica. Once you find a cool one and download it, go to MultiMC. This will bring you to the main folder. Now, simply copy or move the schematic to the schematic folder. Once you load up into the world and press M, the Lightmatica menu will open up. You can click on Load Schematic and load your new schematic. You can move the schematic around like this. Another method of getting schematics is to copy a specific part of the map. For example, if you have a cool structure in one world. To do this, go to the area editor and set both corners of the structure. Save the schematic and you'll be able to access it. Alternatively, you can also easily move the schematic around using a stick. You can also switch between different modes of stick by holding the control key and scrolling with the mouse. To be able to use the abilities of a stick, you will have to configure a key bind. You will have to set the execute operation key bind, for example, I set it on the plus key. Now by selecting the mode paste schematic in world and clicking your set key, you can just paste the whole schematic instantly. What I usually like to do before a build is to paste the schematic into the world. Using a wooden axe and utilizing the world edit mod set both corners of the structure like this. And now I usually remove or replace any weird blocks if it doesn't affect the actual build that much. You can use a command with two dashes and then replace followed by the block you want to replace and followed by the block you want to replace it with. Then I save the schematic using the area editor and save it as a fixed version. This can also be used to convert between schematic to Lightmatica file format of these schematics and solve problems. To delete this structure you can just write replace error. If you made a mistake just write undo. Once you have your schematic placed down, press M and look at the items you will need. You can create a text file of all of the items and access it like this if it's easier for you. Put all of those items into your inventory. You will also need dirt blocks as support blocks, and you can change which block to use. I also recommend including a pickaxe in your inventory. To use the Meteor client, press the right shift key to open it. Here, you can change various settings. For auto building, we will be using baritone, so here are all the settings for that. Sometimes the auto builder can have problems with block orientation, such as stairs. You can play around with the settings and toggle on build ignore direction. Here we can also change what support block we will be using. Optionally, you can also enable build by layer. Sometimes it's better, and sometimes it's worse. To auto build, you will have to be in survival mode, since for some reason, it can't access the whole inventory in creative mode, and you are limited to your hotbar. You will also have to toggle allow inventory. Now we will use my mod to get infinite blocks and we won't have to refill constantly. Go to settings and controls, and you will find it down there. Set the keybind to your desired key. Again, make sure cheats are enabled and toggle it. Try if it's working. For a nice time lapse, let's set the difficulty to peaceful and use the command game rule keep inventory true, just in case we somehow die. Let's also type in game rule do daylight cycle false for a nicer time lapse since otherwise it can cause an annoying effect of constant day and night cycles and let's also do the game rule do weather cycle false. Now we can start the recording of our time lapse by going into the pause menu and clicking start recording. To finally start auto building, just write Lightmatica 
While the schematic is placed down with the Light Matica mod correctly, building large structures will take quite some time. To speed that up in the Meteor HUD, search for timer. Right-click on it, and play around with the in-game speed. I recommend that you don't set it too high since it can mess with the game, preferably if you have time. Leave it off. Note that faster movement will also affect the replay. There's also an option for free cam. While the build is being made, your character may sometimes get stuck. Usually, it's an easy fix by just moving around a bit. You can also pause or resume the build. Now I will show you the ideal use case for this method, which is to convert actual 3D objects into Minecraft and build them. On Google, search for 3D objects. I usually look for them on Sketchfab. Here I found a cool tax shooter from Bloons Tower Defense 6. Download the GLB or object format if available, preferably GLB. Once you have the file, search for Minecraft Object to Schematic. Here you will find a cool website that converts actual objects into Minecraft schematics. Some objects can be problematic and not show up correctly, but mostly they do. You can set all sorts of settings here, mainly how big you want the structure to be in height. You can also play around with the color accuracy setting and others. Once you are happy, just export the structure. To put it into your Minecraft folder, open it up like so. Go into schematics and paste it here. Now we can place it down. Using world edit, I will again change some blocks so that I will have fewer different blocks to have in the inventory. I will save it as a new schematic. Again, I will set these settings so that the replay will look nicer. Now, I will start recording and write the command Lightmatica. As you can see, the structure is now being built. Once the build is done, some filler blocks for climbing might still be left out. Let's remove them with the world edit mod like this. Now you can stop the recording. Go to the main menu and make sure to save the recording. You can find your replays here. Here are some simple guidelines to create a replay. Find the start of the build on the upper timeline. It might be laggy jumping between different times. If you moved really far away in the replay, chances are you will have a blank screen. To fix that, click B and you can teleport to your character and using the shift key, you can detach from him. We can set the beginning of the replay by creating a position and time keyframe. Now go to the end of the replay. On the timeline, set how long you want the replay to be. I will put it at about 2 minutes since I will use it for a YouTube short, and I can always speed it up with editing. Set a time keyframe. Now you can play around with position keyframes from the beginning to the end of the timeline to move the camera around. You can also use the J and L key to rotate the camera. I will put a more detailed tutorial in the description.
Before rendering, we can also now choose to use any shader to make our replay look even nicer. Once you are happy with your replay, click on Render Camera Path. Preferably leave it at MP4 custom bit rate. Choose the resolution for 1080p use this. Alternatively, for vertical style of video use these resolutions, and for 4K use this. A bit rate of 50 should probably suffice, otherwise, it will render for a really long time. For 1080p, you can go even lower. Let's choose a file name, and now click render. As you can see, it prompts us that we are missing an FFmpeg. This is an easy fix. Just open it in a browser, download it. And extract it. And put it anywhere in your Minecraft folder like so. Now you can render the video. This should be quite a lengthy process depending on the specs of your computer and the length and bit rate of the video. You can find these videos stored here after they are done. As you can see, I ended up with a nice time lapse. I will leave a link for it for reference in the description. And that's all for this tutorial guys. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See ya.